I'm a full-time working artist, a contemporary landscape painter here in Noosa, and today I want to talk to you about who is responsible for you being successful in your art business. We talked last week about the fact that if you want to become a full-time working artist or even earn a part-time income, you cross a line where you go from being a hobby artist to becoming a art business, right? So who's responsible for that? We talked briefly last week about the fact that you can partner with somebody. If you just cannot embrace the business side of art, you know, learning how to get good at sales, marketing, promotion, and so on, and loving that side of what we do as artists, you know, full-time working artists, if you can't embrace that, I talked briefly about the idea of partnering with somebody, you know, finding an art dealer or an art gallery to promote your work for you and sell your work. Um, but chances of that happening for most of us is so slim, I'm not even going to consider it. Uh, maybe we'll cover that in a future episode, but I only know one artist who makes a full-time living from somebody else that he's partnered with. Now, there's others out there, but I only know one personally. Um, so who's responsible is what we're going to talk about today. And there's really, there's a bit of a myth, I think, when, when young uh, artists go through art school, they go through a university degree, fine arts degree, or whatever. Um, I think they buy into a bit of a myth. I don't know whether it's promoted this myth to them um, through their art teachers and so on. Uh, but there's a bit of a misconception out there that you will be discovered. And if you wait for somebody to come by and discover you as this genius artist, um, I think you're going to be waiting a very, very long time and you'll probably end up doing what most people do who strive to become professional artists is that they end up quitting. Sad but true. And uh, my belief is that nobody's going to come by and discover you. Um, and if they do, if you're stagnant, right, in other words, you're not actually doing anything and you have no momentum, even if the person who's going to come by to discover you does come by, which I don't think they're going to, right? Um, but if they did, let's say I'm wrong, and, and the person who's meant to discover you is going to come by, you're going to meet them somewhere. Um, if they don't find you busy, working, having momentum, creating success, doing things, finding collectors, selling paintings already, right? So if you're not in motion and, and already creating success, then they're probably not going to be that interested in you. Right? If they come by and they find you and you've done you know, five paintings <laughs> and you haven't painted for three months, they're not going to be attracted to want to represent you. Right? No matter how much of a genius you think you are, um, the commercial realities are that if they can't see you producing enough quality work and that there's already some interest out there and some demand building, people buying your arts and a bit of a collective, but if they can't see that level of activity, then commercially, you're just not viable for anyone to put your time, effort, money into promoting. So either way, if you believe in the myth that somebody's going to come by and discover you and you're going to become a famous artist overnight, if you buy into that concept, good luck with that. Um, I think it's BS, right? Um, I don't think that's going to happen for 99.99999% of artists. So I'm not going to discount the possibility. I'm just saying it's probably not that probable. Right, um, It's 100% possible, but it's almost 0% probability of it happening for most of us artists. Right, So therefore, who's going to be responsible for you becoming successful? And the only person that you can rely on is yourself. It's the only person you can rely on. Right, There's nobody else out there who is going to make you successful apart from you. So how do you make yourself successful as an artist? And... Um, I was chatting with my wife about this. We were talking about, you know, she asked me what made the difference um, in, in me becoming so focused and self-reliant and just get up every day and just do the things I have to do and then 10x those things, right? So just keep doing more of the things that are working and, and pruning away the things that aren't. H how did that happen, she asked me. And, 
you know, it's kind of like asking where does inspiration and motivation come from, right? If you're going to be a self-reliant artist, in other words, you accept full responsibility for your success and or failure, then you have to ask yourself, how are you going to motivate yourself and where does inspiration come from, right? And so five years ago, when I was very early in my career, one of the good references and good books that I read was a book by Jack White. Now, Jack was a professional artist in Texas who made a lot of sales and a lot of money as an artist, um, you know, 30 years ago, right? So he he knew what it was like to be a full-time working artist and to pay his mortgage or rent from the sales of his art, right? So this is somebody I... You know, you, you know you can go to that sort of reference and say this is somebody who knows what they're talking about, right? Um, so what did he say in his book? He, 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 I was reading it and he said the very same thing. Somebody asked him where does he find his inspiration? And this particular artist was bemoaning the fact that, you know, inspiration wasn't coming to her. The muse was not working that day and she hadn't been able to paint for six months, right? And so Jack's response was, I find my inspiration with FedEx. And the artist was confused and she couldn't work out what on earth he meant by FedEx, right? And so he explained that every week, because he was living in a different location from Texas at the time, um, every week his assistant back in Texas would put all of his bills into a FedEx package and courier them to him. I think he was in Hawaii at the time. He'd open them and he'd have all his bills on the table each week. And that was the motivation to get painting, right? And, and unfortunately, you know, we all have this romantic notion of the artist who has a muse and they get bolts of inspiration and bullshit, 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 right? Um, we all like to think that that's the reality of being a full-time artist, but the reality is there's bills to pay and if you want to eat this week, you paint and you sell your art. And that's just the commercial reality of being in the art business. Nobody else is going to do either of those two tasks for you, right? You need to create the art on a consistent and regular basis and you need to create great art and you need to keep improving that art. And you need to be selling art on a consistent and regular basis and focusing on your marketing and promotion and building your business. You need to be doing both of those things. So where do you get the motivation from? Well, as Jack said, FedEx, you know, you gotta pay the bills, you gotta eat, you gotta look after your family, you gotta buy new clothes, you gotta pay the rent, you gotta get a new car, you know, put petrol, in. You shouldn't need any inspiration, right? Because the, to me, the, the thing that fueled and drove me motivation-wise was I just couldn't see myself going back to a job ever, right? I disliked working for somebody else so much that I was motivated and I took full responsibility. I knew that if I was going to be successful as an artist, I had to make that success. I had to create it. I had to build it. I had to work at it every day which is why I bounce out of bed, I make my coffee and I'm pretty much straight into it. I'm highly motivated to achieve success. You have to be as well. So you have to say, you know what? There is nobody else out there. There is no um, person who's gonna come by and discover you. There is no bolt of inspiration. Now you can get ideas, like I got an idea the other day just driving around and this idea came to me, right? But ideas are worthless. What I had to do is then pick up a paintbrush and turn that idea into a series of work, a new collection, right? Um, that requires self-motivation, that requires self-drive, self-discipline, and that means you have to accept the fact that you are the person who's 100% responsible for your success or failure. Self-reliance is the key, right? Um, you need to just become focused on you being the one who produces the activity and the success or failure. And if you're trying to think that anybody else out there is going to help you become successful, then you're on the wrong path. You're thinking wrong. You need to adjust your thinking back to, no, no, I'm the one who's going to make myself successful. I'm the one who has to do the work. I'm the one who has to paint the great paintings. And I'm the one who has to go out and sell, promote and market myself, right? Become self-reliant. Don't rely on anybody else and you've got a much greater chance of becoming successful as an artist. Hope that helps. Leave a like, comment, share, question, and uh, I look forward to talking to you next week on the Art Biz Show. Cheers for now. Don't listen to the BS that's out there. Focus in on the correct information. Paint great paintings, go out and sell them, and you can become a successful artist too. Cheers for now.